on last week's episode of Storytime with Dutch Mantel, episode 101. What did you say about Ric Flair specifically, do you remember? So this was about the last match and the heart attack and him wanting to be uh, dying in the in the ring, essentially. Yeah. Well, we watched the the video of him in the bar <clears throat> in Gainesville, Florida, where he took his family and friends after a graduation ceremony for somebody. And he got in there, and I guess he got cut off from buying any more beer or booze. And the reason he got cut off, he, he didn't get thrown out. He got cut off. And that's even worse than getting thrown out. So he pitches a bitch up there at the, you know, at the, at the cashier where you pay for your stuff. And he's talking to the owner and threatening to take the owner outside and to punch the owner out. And, and, and he was just, he just, he just Ric Flair. So, but what I liked about it is there was one guy listening to him and finally close to the end of it, he wanted the manager to go out and the guy said, Hey, I'll go out there. <laughs> and Flair said, what'd you say? He, he said, I'll he go said out about there, four times. He's yeah, like, he said, what do you say? What, what did you say to me? Went, because he couldn't, you actually, he couldn't actually think of anything to follow up with. And like he said, well, what do you say? Uh, and then he turned his attention. He didn't want to go outside. No. Listen, the toughest guy in wrestling, damn sure is not Ric Flair. To be honest, I've never heard of Ric Flair even being in a fight with anybody. So I don't know. Uh, it, it's crazy. But anyway, the thing on X surprised the hell out of me. Because all we got to do is mention his name and he's damn, he's so temperamental. Or his social media guy is so temperamental. Well, you've got a theory that he's not tweeting himself. Uh, who, Rick? Yeah. Hell no. I doubt if he could even use a cell phone to dial a number, to punch a number in. And see, the thing about that tweet is every ca every letter is capitalized. Every word, first letter, is capitalized. Now, that takes a little bit of time. I don't think Rick... I don't know how he is about, you know, doing this, but I don't think he, he would be that good. So this got to be a social media guy, and they must be looking for a few more views because reviews kind of dropped off. <clears throat> so he wants somebody to to argue with and and, and bitch about. So, but yeah, he wants to said he wanted to, and everybody knows this. He wants to die in the ring. Well, let me give you the full quote. Yeah, he actually agreed with me. Well, that's the weird thing. It's, it's, it's a weird quote. So, Dutch, I'm so happy to admit that I agree with every comment you made about me. I mean, I mean, didn't you call, I think you called him, quote, a piece of crap at one point in this, so apparently he agrees. I was lucky to not die of a heart attack in the ring during my last match. But you're right. I do want to die in the limelight. I've been at it. Sorry, I've been in it since I was 15 years old. I'm 75 years old now, still in the limelight and still the main event. Jess L. Popat, MD, was the doctor who diagnosed me with a heart attack. Most credible heart surgeon in Tampa, FYI, is a bitch being the star. I'm not quite sure. What's he quite getting at there? I don't know. <clears throat> I guess he was just reaffirming that he wants to go out. Because I, I've said, I said, I think he wants to actually die in the ring because people thought he had died in the ring in his last match. Undertaker was there. A few more people were there and they all thought, Hey, Rick is gone. He said he's had a heart attack and, <clears throat> and I heard even, even Jeff Jarrett told me they thought he had a heart attack. So, I said, well, you know, he didn't say nothing about this <laughs> when we was going over the match. But uh but anyway, I I he has he has confirmed that he wants to actually die in the ring. So you have my tweet that I sent him back? Uh I do, I'll get to it in a minute. I I want to requote here because I think it's a bit of a scary thing to actually admit in public, but you're right. 
I do want to die in the limelight. I mean, what's his kids going to think about a, a, a sort of claim uh, like that? R- Rick don't think of kids. He don't think of anybody else. You've heard of a narcissist? Mm-hmm. You don't even have to describe the meaning of it. Just put a picture of Ric Flair on the wall, and that's the narcissist. Because everything to him, he's first in everything. But see, he used to be so so picky about his matches and how worthy and was this and was this and because he was really worried about having good matches. And he always did have good matches because he he should have good matches. He was with some of the best talent in the world. I'm not saying he's not a great talent. He is. He is a great talent. But he was with other great talent. Because you don't get a shot at the world's heavyweight champion if you're just a, a so-so guy. You don't get it. But And he would take some guys that really couldn't wrestle that well and get a hell of a match out of them. But what happened to Flair, I I think, and I've said this before, you you see one Flair match, you've seen them all. Because now he takes that bump over the top rope, the upside down thing in the turnbuckle, then the slam off the top, then the press slam. I mean, how many times have I seen that? So it doesn't surprise me. But for him to actually admit that he does want to die in the ring, kind of. That doesn't surprise me, but hey, he told the truth. Well, 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 exactly. He didn't say die in the ring, but die in the limelight. I mean, I was thinking, taking that quote, and then the whole pizza rear argument thing, someone filmed and then it made the news. In Ric Flair's mind, regardless of how he, act, he, act, he acted or anybody else wronged him or he wronged anybody else, as long as the focus is on him, does he think that whole video pizza thing was a good thing? He's in the limelight, therefore it's a good thing, regardless of how he's acting. Oh, he don't give a crap. He don't. He he liked it. I'm I'm sure he liked it. Because <laughs> he's the subject of the of the whole little sketch. The whole little, you know, little video they had. Now I would feel really stupid if <laughs> if they'd worked us. <laughs> And we're buying into it, but no, I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think Flair could act that well. Mm. But, but I do think, like I said, I think he would be happy to ride off into the sunset if he joined the way up yonder while he was in the ring. So your response. On Twitter, I think it was now, it the same now, day. No, I was nice. Yes, nah, yeah. as it was the day after, I think. Yeah. Rick, because people people started contacting me and said, "Ah, oh, Flair's after you again." Oh, <laughs> says Rick. Glad you agree with me, but if you want to die in a ring, then so be it. Free will, free country. So you'll be assured that you'll die the star. Although, in many fans' eyes, a very stupid one. <laughs> thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the pub. Stay out of pizza joints. More on the podcast, uh, and then you've tagged me in it kindly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, <clears throat> he can do what he wants to do. Somebody suggested this morning said, "Why don't you and Rick have a last match together?" And I said, "I don't know." Well, I didn't say I don't know. I just said no. <laughs> I w- I would not even even attempt to have a last match. My last match is years ago, and let it stay there. I have a hard time getting in a ring now, but we'll could, see what happens. If you have, have I, I want to little... see, I want to see what his next response is going to be. If you ever heard of a last man standing match, maybe this could be a first man standing match, like first one to get out of the chair. <laughs> hey, that's that is not funny. <laughs> that is not funny. Yeah, the first man standing. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> <So> good. <laughs> Almost made it, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Hey. First, first man standing. Sixty-minute Broadway. Then he can do a re- return. Yeah, match. yeah. And we just sit there, and we have a little TV there, in case when we get all blown up trying to get up, 
we just turn in, you know, we turn on uh, <laughs> Supermax or something and watch something. Uh, someone in the comments when you posted that, I was just leafing through the comments. And obviously, it's weird, like everyone in your comments supports you. Half the people in Ric Flair's comments support you, or maybe even the majority. <laughs> so... Um, Someone in your comments, I didn't, I didn't write down the name of the person who wrote it, but he mentioned a comedian called Tommy Cooper. Uh, I know, I know, he was in the states at one point. He's the guy with the fares, uh, you know, as I can't even remember what his uh, so, uh, catchphrase was. Uh, oh, that was it. This is just like that. Anyway, he's famous for in this country, dying on stage live on TV. He just had a heart attack, dropped dead. It was something like. Sunday at the Palladium or something like 84. I've, I've not actually researched this at all. I just, this off the top of my head. And the thing is, he was a very, very famous person in this country for decades. Yet the first thing you think about Tommy Cooper is he died on stage. So I'm wondering, reflecting back on Ric Flair here, if he did, let's say, stupidly decide to do like another match or something, his legacy would be Ric Flair died wrestling, died in a ring, and then everything else would sort of be like a bullet point afterwards. And that's not really the legacy, surely, he wants, is it? But I would think it would say he died in the ring, which is what he wanted to happen. It's like died with your boots on kind of thing. Well, but anyway, Rick, I love you, brother. Just no, you don't. Keep, keep my, well, not really. Keep my name out of your mouth. <laughs> no, keep it in. It's good for the podcast. Oh, it is? Oh, well, yeah. Rick, you no good bastard. <laughs> uh, hey, I got an attorney now. I'll sue you. Yeah. What could I sue him for? Just uh, come up with something, could we? I don't know. I mean, you're so like tweeting, sort in, of agreeing with each other. Impersonating a wrestler. Mm. That's what he's doing now. Mm. Mm. Impersonating Ric Flair. <laughs> I've got a couple more Ric Flair follow-up questions here that I'm interested in. So something. Uh, let me let me hear them. Uh, something about Ric Flair is, at least these days, I don't know. Uh, back in the how's day, that, how's that mustache? Pretty good, I'd say. Very, I quite like the pink hat with it. Very symmetrical. Yes. When you a, say the oh yes, that is the uh, compliment of compliments to a, a mustache as uh, prominent as yours. Uh, yeah. Was Ric Flair always bad at taking criticism? Was he always thin-skinned? Was he always... Even back in the day, apparently, I've heard stories about Ric Flair being terribly insecure. You alluded to it beforehand. He was the person more than anyone else who would ask people's opinions. Did you think that was a good match? Did you think I was okay? Considering that Ric Flair was, you know, one of the best, at least, or in some eyes, the best to do it, especially at the time. Was he always well, just, insecure? No, I've just been told that. He never asked me. Even when I had a match with him, a couple of matches with him, he never asked me, was the match okay? But it was it was a good match. But did did you two ever have an official falling out over something? Or was it just over the years? I mean, because no. I know you fell out with him over like David Flair and he didn't turn up when he said he would and he Well did. but that's all but that's on my end. You know, he didn't give a crap. And he and I understand his concern about David as his son. Yeah, I got that. We were all concerned and, about David. Oh, yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't fault him for that. He just wanted to take care of his, uh, of his son. And he tried to get him in other, other promotions and nobody would take him. So I think David had the wrong idea about the wrestling business because he saw his dad go to these sold out arenas and make all this big money. Well, when he had to start wrestling, he'd go down and there'd be like 200 people in the audience, 150 people. And he'd get his check and it'd hardly be anything for the, for the match. So he was disillusioned about the wrestling business about probably the first weekend. Well, in WCW, he was paid very handsomely, so going to the Indies or, or Puerto Rico or whatever would have been a... Well, but he wasn't in w, WCW long, was he? He was in there from 99. He was in there for at least 18 months. Okay. 